Hi, this is just another test run. Um, I'm actually gonna paint something this time. Um, I just grabbed a little badger. Oh, seriously, paint clog. Uh, well, we could talk about this. Um, so I use predominantly Reaper paints. There we go. Uh, as most people know, Reaper paints come in the popular dropper bottle. Um, and I use, I started with Citadel paints, um, because that's what our local store sold. And those are great paints too. And actually, I would highly recommend Citadel paint if you are just starting. And the reason why is Citadel paint is a lot uh, thicker. And they actually, well, I'm going to take that back. It's not so much that it's thicker, it's that they kind of let you know which ones are thick and which ones are thinner, uh, base-wise. So, like, um, they've got, actually, here, I have some. So, got a base, a base, oh, there's a Oh my goodness, cannot find a layer. There's a layer. So, um, Citadel, uh, you'll see the word like base. Uh, generally, these have a thicker ones. They're meant to be your base coat. Um, whatever you do with it is what you do with it. The ones that are, say, layer, uh, they tend to be a thinner base for the pigment. Um, thus being more for layering your color um and then you know you've got your shade and your technical and i mean this is all that you really care about this is what makes citadel king is this little bottle of liquid gold that i have spilled so many times i could cry um so we'll well not that one i have a different one um Oh, you know what? I think I gave it to my friend. Yeah, I did. Oh, that's okay. You know what? She needs it. My friend is just starting painting. And I gave her a bunch of Citadel paints because she liked those better because they are more beginner friendly. So, um, oh, where I was going with this um, is that Reaper has a great paint line, but um, because the woman who designed the majority of the paints, uh, Anne, she's a miniature painter. So she designed these with miniature painting in mind. So they tend to be thinner because, um, you can add more layers with thin coats, but you can't take back a thick layer of paint, essentially, without stripping and starting over. So Reaper paints tend to be uh, quite a bit thinner. Um, oh, and against uh, against popular belief, I in fact do not use a wet palette. I use a ceramic well palette because um, Ann Forrester, she streams every weekday morning. Two, three, four. She streams every morning. I've been watching her and learning a lot. Um, she uses a well palette and the well palette makes a lot of sense to me personally because when I'm painting for competition I record everything. Every mixture, my paint to water ratio and I can make it so precise with a well palette that it brings me so much joy. So that's why I use a well palette. Um, it says legit as a wet palette it just has different uses um gonna pra gotta practice keeping the mini on camera so i'm just gonna quickly do a brown base coat on our badger friend um especially with reaper paints going straight onto bones you don't need to add water to your base coat um, for the most part, you know, you do you, really. 
Um, but this is me just putting paint straight onto the model. I'm pretty sure I didn't even wash this. I just literally decided I was going to do this and I pulled it right out of a drawer. Paint, paint, paint. I'm painting as fast as I can. <laughs> Um, sorry if I'm kind of rambling. I've never done this before. I usually watch Netflix or literally absolutely anything that I can just paint to. I've never actually had to talk while I'm painting or be mindful of where my hands are while I'm painting. You might be looking at my brush and going, oh god, what is that? This is a Hobbycraft brush that I got at Michael's a number of years ago when I was a college student, and it's still kicking. Um, I actually I don't own any Sable hair brushes or Da Vinci or Maestro or whatever they're called. Um, I got a couple of Reaper brushes that's about as high end as my brush drawer gets. Um, mostly because I get good results. I get results that I'm happy with. Um, with the brush brushes that I'm using. I've never used a stable brush and I am positive that if I ever had the opportunity to use one, I would agree that it is life changing. But until then, uh, I'm pretty happy with my crappy cheapo hobby brushes. These little ones are always so tricky with their undersides. Um, so I'm not going really going in with a plan. Um, I wanted to actually base them in gray and then I shook up the brown. Oh well. Oh, did I go off frame? Sorry. Uh, so there's a nice base coat on our badger friend. Swish, swish, swish. Um, I also, to help out my brushes, um, you can't really see it, but it's right here. Uh, this is a wet paper towel. Um, that really helps with prolong the life of a brush, uh, rather than grabbing it and forcefully straining it through a dry paper towel. I do still grab my bristles. I know you're not really supposed to, but, meh. <laughs> Um, it's not really that, but I have cheaper hobby brushes, so obviously I don't really care. Because I can just get a thousand and one more for the price of one sable hair brush. Um, I'm actually going to add some black because, because I meant to do this base coat in gray. I know I want to give him a stripe. And I'm not going to give him badger stripes because I'm obviously not painting him as a badger. But now I'm gonna add a drop of water. Um, this is just a MSP empty bottle from Reaper. They sell them in packs of three and I love them for water because you get a drop that is the same size of paint and it is so much better controlled than dropper bottles you can get at Michael's or the H store. I will not speak their name. I don't want that hate. <laughs> Uh, so that's with one drop of water. Eh. I'll do two. Thin our pants. Thin, thin, thin. Gotta thin our thin pants. Cause that's how you paint minis. Anybody will tell you. You go onto any Facebook page, any forum, any Reddit page, any Discord. And you ask, what's something I should do to get better? You're going to just get a thousand and one responses saying, thin your paints. And that's not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. Because it sure as hell didn't make any sense to me. So I'm going to give him a little stripey down his back just to make him interesting. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of working against the grain, so to say. Um, because his body is long, because his body is long, this way, I don't want to paint 
my stripe this way um, because then it doesn't blend in well once the paint starts to dry and we do a couple more layers over them. Um, but if I go against it, so in the way that I have been going like this way, that layer and stripe start to blend better into the fur. I'm going to black end on his tail. Yeah, that's cool. I don't even know if it's supposed to be a badger. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It came in a familiar pack. I wanted the pack for the wolf. <laughs> so you can kind of see this little lighter rim right there. Oh, can you see that? That's really kind of dark, huh? Hold on. Like I said, this is a test room, so I'm going to be fixing things as we go. Does this help? Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so next I'm going to take uh, a gray. I'm going with wolf gray. Just because it's a warmer gray. And I've got a real thing for warm grays on fur. Um, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to count, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. I always do things in fours. Um, that always seems, so like my base go-to is four to one, paint to water. Um, and then as I need thinner, I just keep adding more water to the four. It's just, I don't know, it's my thing. <laughs> um, so let me do one, two, three. Three, yeah. Let's see, because we don't want to block out everything. We kind of want him to blend in. So let's see. Yeah. I'll do one more. We'll do four to four. So a one to one. I also like this ceramic palette um, because when I'm working on my bigger models, um, I'll do double. So I'll do eight to two as a normal coat. Um, and then once once I have that much paint in here, it lasts for a long time. Well, this is still kind of wet. I'll start with this tail. This tail's almost dry. So we're just going to kind of go on over. Yeah, that black was still kind of wet. Oh, well. That's interesting. It's layering. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you that my phone is actually balanced on top of my magnifying glass? Because it is. That is how new to the life of YouTube I am. I don't even own a camera. I bet you could tell though that I didn't own a proper camera because this video quality probably, well, it, should, it shouldn't be too bad though. It is an iPhone X and before the 11 came out, it was a thousand dollar phone and it was a thousand dollar phone for a good reason. No, I know it wasn't. It was only a thousand dollar phone because it was an Apple product. Um, and I only have an iPhone because of work, really. What do I need an iPhone for work for, you might be wondering? Well, that is a story for another stream. Stream? I keep saying stream. You know why I keep saying stream? Because I keep watching Twitch. Because I take all my painting lessons on Twitch. I call them my painting lessons. I'm really just tuning in to other people's live streams. Uh, calling them lessons is keeping me sane. Literally, because it makes me feel like I have purpose in the day. And that's okay. Um, so we gotta wait for him to dry. Cause I guess it must it must be getting humid. It's probably gonna rain. Um oh, sorry. I could show you some of this other stuff I'm working on. Um you might have seen him in another stream. Yeah, do you know I should probably demonstrate some of the stuff I can do. Um, I'm going to tell you to go over to my Instagram to see what I can do because I'm looking at my cabinet and it's got a game set up in front of it right now. And I don't want to grab my dragons. They're big. Some of them aren't really attached to anything. And 
don't want them to lose their paint. This is my Hellborn Paladin. He's a, a recent project. Um, I still don't know how I feel about that. I've been looking at that for weeks and I'm like, I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do some freehand on his shield. And that's what I did. I swear to God, I'm a better freehand yeah. painter. Um, I like his wolf pelt though. It's not done, but that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with the badger is to get this straight. Doing some M N M M on his armor. I like his skin color. I like it a lot. I actually just use that skin tone for a gnome. It's not very hellborny. It's a little bit too brown. I think. I think hellborns are supposed to be like red or orange or purple. This is a cool one. This is my copper. I'll be painting him um, in videos to go over how I like to do my uh, NMM for metallic dragons. And by my N NMM for metallic dragons, I mean the one time I pulled it off on a wormling, and now I'm trying it on something bigger. But his base is super cool. Um, I made a model because he's supposed to be older and as metallic dragons age they start to get a mottled skin rather than that solid copper or solid gold. Um, so I'll do the NMM up from these colors, the orange and the yellow. And then I'm gonna add in flecks of the blue tarnish. And if the whole thing doesn't work, I'm gonna dry brush metallic paint on him and call him done. Cause he'll still look good, probably. I don't know, he'll look good for tabletop. Um, if anything's ever made me famous, it is my Autumn Dragon, who I have set as my profile picture for this channel. Um, she's absolutely beautiful, and I love her a lot. And I guess she made me kind of famous? I don't know, I'm not really that famous at all. Nobody really knows who I am. But everybody knows that dragon. <laughs> Um, how does our guy doing? Oh god, where'd he go? There he is. Yeah, he's getting there. So you can kind of see. You can kind of see? You can kind of see. Mm. Um, I'm filming at night right now. So, that's probably part of the problem. I'm literally in front of three massive windows. And the sun is in this room all day. So... We'll try another one in the morning, um, but probably not tomorrow because I got stuff to do. But let's keep painting our little guy. Yeah, so that was super easy. So he's got a very visible stripe. Um, the next thing we're going to do is I'll pick out his muzzle a little bit. Um, I don't know how this is gonna look. It's probably gonna look weird. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, always four drops, no matter how small. Don't ask me why, because I don't understand how I work. Uh, this is barbarian flesh. I don't know how it's gonna work. <laughs> Our badger friend might look like a clown. Uh, we'll do one, two. Sorry, I don't mean to do something like, like I said, I literally don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but we're gonna have some fun, yeah. Pick out his muzzle, you know, cause he's been doing a lot of stuff. Oh, that's a little bit too thin. Well, maybe not. So we'll get his muzzle and his little mouth. Oh, Aww, he's kind of cute. Come up his face a little bit and into the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just to be clear, I'm doing a fast tabletop paint for this because we're already at 20 minutes, so I didn't 
even know if I could call it fast at this point. But yeah, so we're just going to say that um, your player character has a badger, pet, familiar, companion, what, whatever. And your game starts in two hours. This video will not be two hours long. Um, but you, you have badger. He doesn't need to look anything special. So this is, I guess, how you, how I would approach it. Let that dry a little. Yeah. Um. Get his lips or his mouth at least a little bit. I'm only gonna do one drop this time. That was a little bit too thin. One, two, three, four. Always four. These are great. Like, oh my god, just get one of these. <laughs> Um, I actually recently found out you can get them in at least Reaper's Layer Up kit. So Reaper has two paint kits. Um, and my friend Leah skipped the core one. She, or she didn't know about it. And she went straight to Layer Up. Um, and Layer Up is great. It's a great kit. Um, when, you're tr when you already have a grasp of the true basics of painting. And I mean, like, you can get your badger to look like an animal like that basic of a thing so i'm gonna just pick out his lips a little bit yeah um i'm doing this because i don't know he's got allergies he's like my mom's dog he's been going at his face too much my mom's dog's name is beethoven in case anybody's wondering um he is a long-haired chihuahua and i love him He's a good boy. He's very old, though. I get this too. This is much better than that first coat I put down. And then what we'll do is we will do another gray wash over it to kind of tone it down a little bit. Yeah. Um... So while well, I give that half a second to dry, earlier I said uh, that this is literally liquid gold. And this is, if you're going to own anything, Citadel, if you want to turn your nose up to Citadel and be like Vallejo, Reaper, um, those are literally Army Painter. Those are literally the only three paint companies I can think of off the top of my head. Um, you're still going to have one of these uh, because of what it does. Especially for tabletop. And there's nothing wrong with painting for tabletop at all. I started painting for tabletop and everybody starts painting for tabletop. It doesn't matter if you think the first thing you painted is the greatest thing in the world. You painted it for tabletop. Um, and what this does is it brings your tabletop style to kind of a fake level not really fake kind of fake um it makes everything look natural and that looks great on table when it looks like it's part of the world it looks so much better i'm actually going to add one more drop to this gray because this is a much lighter color than the brown and the black but why did i base it in brown well, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the brown coming through the gray. Um, and it just kind of gives it a little bit of tone and character. Um, I thought while I was waiting for it to dry and I was talking and not thinking about what I was saying, um, I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to do a, a very thin brown layer as well. But I don't. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the gray with just a single black stripe cool so because of how thin that is um you don't want to let that dry like that because it will dry weird um not only will it dry in rings but what's happened is that the paint has sunk into the recesses on the face which turns areas that should be shaded 
very bright, which looks weird as, as all heck. I'm trying to keep this PG. Yeah, this is really dark. I cannot do this at night. Oh God, like I said, I'm balancing the phone on top of a magnifying glass and it just accidentally kicked my desk. I have another bottle of this. I'm losing my mind. It's right here. It's right there in my drawer of supplies because I use it a lot. I didn't give it to my friend Leah. I should have given it to my friend Leah because she needs this. Maybe I'll give her the remnants of it. I mean, there's like a little pot worth of paint left. So I'm actually going to use this brush that I was using to prime a resin mini earlier. Uh, I'm going to just take some, take the excess off. We're going to put this out of range of my flailing hands. And we're just going to do a healthy coat. And you're going to see why I say uh, that Agrax or Shade is liquid gold. Because I can already see it happening. I don't know if you can. Because my video quality is boo. Oh, my back. I'm sorry, my back always really hurts. Um, so yeah, he's very shiny because he's very wet right now. But so, what happened? Um, for those of you who don't know about Agrax Earthshade, if you are brand new, because You'll only not know about it if you are brand new to the hobby, which you might be. If that's the case, welcome to the rest of your life. Um, I hope you have a large house. <laughs> uh, so what that does is because of how thin this is, this isn't really a paint anymore. Um, this is just wet pigment. And because of how light it is, it settles in the recesses so rather than taking my brush and shading all of these areas um where it's settled i just put the wash on and i let it do that for me and that's great you're painting an army and it's just your regular infantry man earth shade you're painting a butt ton of familiars earth shade you're painting kobolds and you've got 30 of them Earth shade. <laughs> I have a lot of kobolds. I really like kobolds. Um, sorry, I'm I really like kobolds. So, earth shade is great. Earth shade is a new painter's best friend because not only does it make you fall in love with your work after you finished it, and it just kind of gives it that new level. Um, it really helps you start to become familiar with where you should be thinking about shading when you're ready to take, when you're ready to, to step it up a notch. Um, I don't really use Earth Shade anymore because I do all of my own shading, but for something this small, I'm gonna Earth Shade. Um, because this is, well, I mean, it could have, if I really liked Badgers, I could have painted it at a top level. But I don't really like badgers. They're kind of creepy. I don't like their claws. Um, it takes a while to dry. Especially when you don't understand why it's taking paint so long to dry. Let's get in some eyes. Um, hmm. Let's give him yellow eyes. We'll go with some gold and yellow. Um, and I'm actually only going to do one drop of paint. <gasps> um, and I'm probably going to miss because, like I said, my phone is back balancing on my magnifying glass. And I don't know where my reading glasses are. Oh, they're right there. I'm not going to put them on. Um, and I'm actually going to use my phone screen to 
No, it's not going to work. Okay, here we go. All right, got lucky for that first one. Uh-oh, this one didn't really form right. It's not that here. Oh, sorry. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> mm. Uh, so this is one of my better brushes. It's a Reaper brush. Um, I'm just going to protect my palette a little bit. So next, we have his little base. I love painting stone. Um, I'm really good at painting stone. And if you can hear my boyfriend screaming in the other room, I am so sorry. <laughs> he is playing league with his friends. Um, we live in a two-bedroom apartment that has only two doors. <laughs> Well, no, I, I, okay, so it has it has a front door, a back door, a bathroom door, and then the two doors to the bedrooms. And I'm in, like, the living room, and he's in the dining room. You didn't need to know that, but I told you anyway. So, still, I actually like to use mountain stone. And it's not just because it has the word stone in it, but it is a very nice color. Um... I'm not going to go into my full stone formula. We're just going to do two layers of paint. We're going to just do a base coat. Two, three, four. Yes, I will count out loud every time. I am so sorry. Um, I lied. We're going to do a couple layers. Because I need him to stand out a little bit. And this is gray and he is gray. Well, actually, he might be okay. So we're just going to paint, paint, paint that on he said that he wanted to start a YouTube channel he um, he makes terrain stuff. He's actually quite good about it. I won't tell him, but he's, he is quite good at it. And he recently got a hot wire table and he's very excited about that. He's also a grad student, so he doesn't have a lot of nice things. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're also really big gamers, although ever since I picked up this hobby, I've found that I've been playing games less, although I love my Switch. I play my Switch every morning. Animal Crossing. Um, and then, of course, when Final Fantasy came out, I didn't pick up a mini for almost a week because I was only playing Final Fantasy. I liked it a lot. That ending, though. Oof. No, I'm kidding. I liked it. <laughs> I dig it. I won't talk about that because that's not what this is about. Did I go off camera again? Ah, God, I am so sorry. Um, so we got four drops of our mountain stone in that well. I'm gonna take a drop of bleached linen. Uh, you don't. I mean, you could use pure white. Uh, so here's my noob experience. I have heard many reasons on why you don't want to use pure white. I can't remember a single one of them. Um, so I guess we'll all do some homework. <laughs> Another drop of water. It's just something about... Um... Oh no, 
you can use you can use um, a regular white. You don't want to use a pure white for just going straight onto a mini. And I can tell you why, because I've done that. Um, it is so stark, and it doesn't look right. Now it looks right if you're doing it with a final highlight. But um, the problem with pure white is that there is nothing there. Um, this has, this is like a warm white. It looks like white, but it's like a warmer white. Um, and you got cooler whites. And it's just that, that subtle little difference makes a whole world of difference. So we're going to just pick out the highlights on some of these. I'll get around here, get this one, oh, there's a mold line, go over mold lines, oh. um, I've only recently started cleaning mold lines, I finally got to that point in my mini painting career where I'm cleaning my models, only the ones that I really care about though, I finally bought files, I went a whole year without having a single file, <laughs> I only ever had, um, the Citadel Clippers that came in a starter set I had gotten. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I don't even have an X-Acto knife. Um, I gotta get one of those because I, I actually need one for work and I keep losing mine, which is why I don't have one. Um, so the problem we're running into right here, um, at least for me, is that he is the same color as his base. And even when I do earth shade that, he's still gonna be the same color as his base. Mm, we could try it. Like I said, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. And so what happened is, is that I didn't think my project through. Uh, but you'll never do that because I've done it for you. <laughs> But this might, this might bring it back. I uh, didn't put that out of reach like I should have. Yeah. It's blending it. Not too terrible though. We'll leave it as it is. This is just test stream. You guys can't even see it because my lighting is terrible. Um, oh yeah, so I don't buy those uh, branded miniature holders. Um, I know that they're great, and they're great, um, especially if you have issues with your hands. Um, I have a slight tremor, actually, um, but it's not so bad that I need something larger to hold on to. This is actually a great size and weight to keep my hand steady-ish. Um, I do tend to lock my pinky finger for detail work to help steady the other hand um but because of that I just take these apple barrel acrylic bottles and this is just poster putty and I just stick them on and sometimes when I take them off there's some residue but if you just go tap 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 it cleans them off <laughs> it comes right off um I use that for the smaller stuff so this was actually Mr. Hellborn's paint holder. Um, I've got like eight. Yeah, I think that's eight. Maybe that's ten models, minis, figures, toys, <laughs> uh, staged on these at various stages of works in progress. Um, I think only this one and another one are actually past priming. Uh, one, two, three of them are primed and the rest are just sitting on top of bottles. The, looking like the day they came out of the packaging. 
I kind of had like a ton of things going at the same time because I have got ADHD and I can't focus on a whole lot of things for very long. So like I'll work on three or four minis a day. Cause I also have, um, I've got two baskets that hold work in progresses that don't necessarily fit on those paint bottles. And one of them has a contest mini for Reaper. And then in my drawer thing, I have another contest mini Grim Talon on if you're familiar with Reaper, you'll know that that's the rock. And it's massive, and I don't own an airbrush, so just let that sink in. Uh, it took me two days to base coat the top wings because I did it um, rather than doing like a black layer or a gray layer like they usually do. I actually just base coated in the darker versions of the colors that I want the wings to be. Yeah, so there's our badger friend. You know, he's nice. I'll put him in my cabinet, actually. Um, yeah, so what we did with him, um, we just did a regular coat of brown. Uh, this, nope, not that brown. No, nope, that's gray. <laughs> this brown, charred brown. It's very dark brown. I like it. Um, that's actually the first time I've used this color. I just got this color the other day. And then we did a stripe of black down his back with just a tiny bit of water added to it. We did, we did two drops of water for that. And we went against the grain when we did that. And then we did a very thin layer of gray over the whole thing. And then we did some earth shade to make him look natural. And then we did his base with just gray, a little bit of gray mixed with white, and then more earth shade. And he's ready for the table. And he's good to go. Um, you could seal him. Reaper sells brush on sealer. So here's my thing. Sorry, I'm going to go off topic again and talk about my apartment. Um, we live on a second floor apartment. So I don't use rattle cans, spray cans, spray paint. Um, so I use a lot of, like, brush-on sealers and primers. So I've got my brush-on sealer, my white primer, my gray primer, gloss. Um, so I use that, and I like it. I think it's great. Um, some people will use the sealers as a wash medium or a glaze medium, and I think that's fantastic. I've never done that, but I think that's cool. And... I won't seal him because uh, the bones paint, actually, it's pretty hardy on bones. It's made for bones. So I'm rubbing my finger against him and the paint's not coming up. Um, metal fi figures that are for the table, I will seal because they're metal figures. Even if you prime them, um, they still need some help. You know, you sacrifice that for the detail on them. But yeah. So I'm going to stop talking finally. And thank you for watching. Um, come back next time and maybe the lighting will be better. And maybe I'll have a plan. <laughs> Bye.